to all the moms. Moms of children who are still at home or all grown up. Moms who've outlived a son or daughter. Or moms of babies they never got to hold. Moms who've raised kids all on their own or became a mom to someone who needed one. Moms of children who have wandered from God or the longing to be moms who are still waiting. God perfectly arranged each of you into the role you have today. His word recognizes you as capable, strong, and praiseworthy. Everything you do makes our lives more beautiful. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Good? Okay, we have to get a little more hype than that because I get super nervous in a quiet room and then I say really stupid things. So if you want to hear from the Lord today, you got to get a little rowdier so I can be a little more confident in the message that God gave me. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, if you're joining us online, happy Mother's Day. You may have the best Mother's Day in the room because you didn't even have to get dressed today. So thank you for joining us online as well. Hey, it is so good to be here today. Um, I'm not Pastor Craig, if you've noticed, but uh, Pastor Craig, our lead pastor, will be back next week, and he's got a message I know that we are all itching to hear, so make sure you join us next week as well. And while we're just um, talking about Pastor Craig, uh, let's just honor for a second the woman of the house, Miss Rochelle. Can we just give it up for her? That's Pastor Craig's wife. Listen, this place wouldn't be nearly as awesome as it is if it weren't for her because she prays for that man all the time and she prays for you all the time. She is a prayer warrior and so we are so grateful for her. So I know she's watching online. Rochelle, thank you for all that you do for this house. Hey, it's been an incredible morning already. Incredible worship, some baby dedications, and this is a shameless plug for life groups because I believe three of the five of those new babies came from the same life group. So it is going to be officially renamed the Fertile Myrtle Life Group. And if you want to have a baby, you should join that life group. It sounds like they got something right. So uh, don't be afraid to sign up for a life group and join in the fun, if you know what I mean. All right, here we go, <laughs> okay. Listen, um, let me just address the elephant in the room real quick. Uh, because Mother's Day is an, is an exciting time and really an awesome day for a lot of people. But for some people, this is a really hard day. Um, some people are dealing with the loss of a loved one that they call mom. Or maybe some moms in the room are dealing with a child that went before them into eternity. And that is a hard day. This is a hard day for many. And some maybe just didn't have the ideal mother that you feel like celebrating on Mother's Day. And so I'm just gonna address that elephant right now because I wanna pray for you right now uh, because today's message is for you. It's also for the people in the room that are celebrating moms and are, and are truly filled with joy today, but there are some that are tr truly filled with sorrow as well. And so I wanna pray for you up front. So if you would be vulnerable just in this moment, would you just slip up a hand if you would say, this day is a little bit hard for me for various reasons. Yeah, there's a lot of hands in the room. If you're sitting next to somebody with their hand and they're okay with you just laying your hand on their shoulder, can we just pray over these people today? Heavenly Father, God, I know that you're here. I know that you're moving amongst us and I know that you've given this message to me for the ones that are hurting just as much as the ones that are celebrating today. God, would your peace comfort them today? God, would your joy overflow in their life today? God, as we talk about running on empty today, God, I know that there are people sitting in these seats and are watching online that would say, that's me, I'm, I'm pretty empty today. God, would you move in, only, in a way that only you can move? God, I pray that each person in this room feels encouraged, uplifted, and hopeful after today's message and after leaving this place. God, help us to love each other today. Celebrate the good things but also be able to encourage those that are brokenhearted in this season. God, we love you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
All right, I told you already, I'm talking on this point of running on empty. It's a really interesting Mother's Day message, but I'm telling you uh, only things that I've been studying in my own life, because uh, they say if you preach out of your weaknesses, you'll never run out of material. And so here I am standing before you telling you that this season has been hard for me. It's been a sprint season. You know they say life is like a marathon. I think really more life is like a series of sprints. There's some seasons of life that are really fast, really hard. We had a few people that ran the mini marathon this weekend and they did incredible. I can't even imagine running 13.1 miles because I can't even run .13 miles. And they did it yesterday. But in my life, it's been a series of sprints And this has been a sprint season, and I feel very much like I've been running on empty. So what I'm going to talk to you about today comes from my heart, comes from my study with the Lord, my time with the Lord, and I hope that it encourages you too. So we're talking today out of the book of 2 Kings, and we're talking about a woman whose husband has passed away. She has two sons. And in this story, this true story, it really happened. This woman comes to Elisha, who's a prophet of God. He's a man of God. He's trusted in the community as hearing from the Lord. And he come, and she comes to him and she says, listen, Elisha, my husband you know is dead. I have two sons and I have nothing. And God, I need God to do something in my life because what's about to happen is the creditors are calling. The phone calls are coming in. I, the bills are due and I have nothing left. So let's just read real quick from this story. It's a short story in the book of 2 Kings. It'll be up on the screen, but if you want to turn in your Bibles, it's 2 Kings chapter 4. It says, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil, and pay your debts, you and your sons can live on what is left. Let's pray. God, would you just meet us in this moment? God, would your Holy Spirit just quicken our hearts to hear what you want us to hear from this message today? God, would you use me to speak your words, to convey your message in your heart? God, would you change us? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pretty cool story about how God came through for this woman, but she was running on empty. And so there's three things that I wanna talk about today that we can do when we're running on empty that we can learn from this woman in this story. The first thing that we can do when we're running on empty is face it. A lot of us don't like to face it when we're running on empty. We continue to burn the candle at both ends. We just want to keep on trucking through. But this woman did an incredibly brave and strong thing. She went to the man of God and she said, this is where I'm at. Let's face it. This is where I'm at. It's it's an interesting story. Because Elisha says this. When she says, I have nothing, Elisha says, how can I help you? What a typical man thing to say. (laughs) She comes to him in her distress. She comes to him in her weariness. She comes to him in her brokenness and fear and tells tells him, I have nothing. My sons are about to be sold into slavery to pay for the debts that I owe. I have nothing. And he says, 
How can I help you? What can I do for you? What is it you need? It's almost as if he's not listening. But she faces it. When you face it and you say that you need help, and when God asks, what is it that you need? Are you gonna be bold enough to tell him? Because I think that's the question that God is asking us today. What do you need? What do you need? When I was really young, I was probably like four. I can't, I can't tell you for sure how old I was, but I was like four or five, maybe even three. And I, my, my parents were divorced at the time, and so my mom relied a lot on the community around her to help take care of us. And so one day, I, I distinctly remember uh, highlights of this story. So I'm gonna tell you the highlight reel. Don't ask me about the details because I don't remember. But I remember the highlights of it. I went on, a, on an errand with a neighbor in the apartment complex. My mom was like, probably as a single mom of two girls, she's like, go wherever you want, do whatever you want, just don't talk to me. Um, and so she, she sent me on an errand with one of the neighbors and I went on that errand, I came back, we were getting out of the car and this is the part that gets fuzzy to me because I don't remember how this happened. But after a series of unfortunate events, my finger ended up smashed in the car door and the car was locked. I remember that. And I remember standing there Looking around, the neighbor was not there, but her child was, who was a little bit older than me. And so I was like frantic. My finger was smashed in the car door. It hurt really bad. And so I asked her to go get my mom. She went and got my mom, but unfortunately my mom did not have the keys to her car. And so my finger was still smashed in the car. And it felt like an eternity. My mom does not serve the Lord, but this was a pretty holy moment for my mom because as my finger is smashed in the car door, she looks at me and says, what can I do for you? <laughs> okay, Elisha. She asked me, what can I do for you? And I just didn't even know. My, my three, four, five-year-old brain could not process what I needed. What I needed was the keys to the car so I could get my finger out of the door. But what I said in all my innocence was this, Mama, I want to cuss. <laughs> what do I need? I need to cuss right now. This is where my mom's holiness ended because... She let me cuss. Uh, that was not a proud mom moment for my mother. But in that moment, I faced it. What do you need? This is what I need. I need, to, I need to say some profanities because I don't know what else to do. I faced it. My finger eventually got unstuck from the door. I don't remember how that happened either. Uh, but I, I just remember that story because... She asked me such a weird question in such a weird time in my life. And if you look through the Bible, anytime, not anytime, but most times Jesus did a miracle, he would ask the person in need of a miracle, what do you need? I remember specifically a, a story in the book of Luke where there was a blind man and he was quite obviously blind, he could not see. And Jesus walked up to this blind beggar and said, uh, what, what is it that you need? And the story says, well, obviously, Jesus, I'm blind. I need you to restore my sight. And while Jesus does restore his sight, he does so much more. He forgives his sins. When we are running on E, we have to face it. We have to be bold enough to tell God what it is that we need in that moment, in that season of our life. Just like, just like this woman just like the blind beggar in Luke 18. What do you want me to do for you? That's the question God's asking you today. The second thing that we have to do when we're running on E is faith it. No, I did not have a lisp there. Faith it. Faith it. The woman in this story was told by Elisha, go send your sons to get jars from other people. 
And don't just ask for a few. That takes a lot of faith. I know that in my life, when God asks me or somebody else asks me to do something, I'm pretty, I try to be pretty humble about it. I'm like, oh, if you have one to spare, if you just have one to spare, God, I'll take it. If you want to give it, if you feel like this would be the right thing to do, I'll take it. But in faith, this woman sent her sons out and said, I need jars. We need community. And when we're running on E, we need to be able to rely on our community. And this woman learned that firsthand. I need jars. I'm not really sure why I need jars because I only have just about this much oil at at my house, but I've been told by the prophet of God to get jars. So in faith, she walked it out. In faith, in obedience, she went and asked for not just a few. She asked for jars. What is it that God is asking you to do in obedience today? What is it that you would say, oh, I just don't know if I can be honest with my life group about where I'm at and what I need from them. I don't know if I can be honest with my boss about the things I'm struggling with and why I need help from them. What is it that God is saying in faith, I need you to do this. I know you don't understand why. I know the odds are not great when you look at it with your human eyes. But I need you to take a step of faith. I need you to faith it here. Where are you? What do you need? And what is it that God is asking you to walk out in faith? The third thing, guys, I'm already on point three. I'll preach fast. The third thing is this. When we're running on E, we have to finish it. When you think of the story of the woman with the oil, the crazy thing is she was told to get the jars and she was told to go into her her home and shut the door. What we know is the end of the story. We know that her little was about to become her livelihood. We know that her few was about to become her miracle. But in that moment, she had to finish what God had commanded her to do. And the crazy thing about this story is a lot of miracles happen so that everybody can see them. And this miracle happened in the home. This miracle happened specifically, Elisha says, go into your home, close the door, and fill the jars. I think sometimes we can really faith it when everyone's watching, but when we are alone in our home with our family, it's a little bit harder to finish it. That's when we get real. That's when we're like, yeah, I can put on a face. I can go to church. I can, read, I can tell people about the scriptures I'm reading in the Bible. I can tell about how God's moving in my life. But when we get behind closed doors, when we get in the comfort of our home, is God still working miracles in your life? Is God still doing the impossible? Is God still doing what he says he'll do for you? We have to be willing to finish it. When we're running on E, we gotta do the hard thing and finish it. This story is very interesting for me to read and and to understand how, how running on E really sets us up for a miracle in our life. And so I want to kind of bring you into the story a little bit. So I have some honorary sons this morning and they're gonna bring some jars. I can just imagine this woman, as her sons had brought the jars, boys, I'm not old enough to be their mother, just so you know, they're honorary sons. (laughs) You look wonderful today. You You guys have a seat. I can just imagine as this woman says, boys, I know it's weird. I know it doesn't make sense. But God has said, go ask for, the, for jars. 
And don't just ask one neighbor. I need, you to, I need you to elementary school fundraise this thing and go to every door in the neighborhood. Don't just ask for a few. And so I can imagine how nervous she must be. Her husband is gone. And she is left to model for her children what walking in obedience looks like. But the reality is there's hardly any oil in the jar. And so can you imagine with me, can you step back in time with me to when, can you scoot, can you scoot over? I just want to sit here on the end. As she's sitting in her living room, she's closed the door to her house and her sons are like, all right, mom, you've gone off the deep end. Because I see all these jars and you only got this much oil, which there, there's not a lot in here. But can you imagine her heart Okay, boys, I know it doesn't make sense. It, it's outrageous, okay? Um, but if your dad were here, he would, he would believe that this could happen. He would believe that God would be able to provide. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk this out. We're gonna finish what God has asked us to do. It doesn't make sense. And I'm just gonna pour this in this jar and we'll just see what, what happens. All right, uh, pray. I can imagine she just trembled in fear. All right. All right, God. You're the same God that did all those miracles. I know you're gonna do one for us. I trust you. I trust you, God. Uh, God is good, right? I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, let's see if we'll do it again. All right, God. That's more oil than I had. That's a whole lot more oil than we had. Are you praying? Here we go. What? God. Next. <laughs> All right, God. I know that's three times a charm, but we're just going for four here. I know you can do it. All right, that's a little less than last time, Lord. Uh, let's just see if he'll, let's just see what he'll do. Whoa! Okay, I'll fill this one, I'll fill this one, I'll fill this one. Okay, next. We're all out. He filled all the jars. All right, boys, go back to Elijah, ask him what to do. Go, go. the same God we serve today. When we're running on empty, we just need to face it. We need to tell him what we need. We need to be bold enough to, to speak it out. What is it you need today? Maybe you need your heart to be filled with joy. Maybe you need to have just a little bit more energy than you've had recently. Maybe you 
have a really hard conversation to have with your kid that you have no idea how to have it because their, their faith hangs in the balance. And if we are too heavy handed, then they might turn their back on God. And if we aren't heavy handed enough, they might not understand the gravity of the situation they're walking through. Maybe you just need God to move in a certain area of your life. Would you be bold enough to tell him today? Would you have enough faith to do the thing he says to do? Because some of us have been bold enough to tell him what we need, but when we listen to what he's prompting us to do, that seems impossible. And so we're sitting on it. And what I've learned about God is when we are obedient, he continues to speak. But when we walk in disobedience, he's silent. And so maybe your problem hasn't seen the miracle because you haven't done the last hard thing he asked you to do. Would you have faith today? Would you be filled with faith today to allow God to work in your situation? And then, you're gonna finish it. Because at the end of the story, after they had time in their home and they witnessed this miracle, can you imagine? I wish the Bible would let us in on what those boys' lives looked like after that. Because I bet they were a force to be reckoned with for God. They had seen in their home. They were, they were don't, don't get it twisted, they, they were broken hearted. Their dad was not around. But they had seen their mom walk it out in faith. They had seen their mom finish what God had started. Can you imagine what those young men looked like after that day? They're probably like, yo, you want an extra candy bar? I know how you can get an extra candy bar. Oh, you're short five bucks? Let me tell you about my God. But that happened in the home. That didn't happen in the streets. And some of us, we need to take what we start out in front of our friends and we start out in our workplace and we start out in church on Sunday mornings and we need to finish it in home. Your children are your first mission field. And this isn't, I mean, this mom was baller and this, this story is all about an awesome mom of faith, but this really applies to everyone. I don't think Mother's Day messages just have to be for moms. I'm just highlighting a really cool one. But ladies and gentlemen, what is it that God's asking of you? What is it that you need from him? And what is it that he's put on your heart to finish behind the doors and walls of your home? He's the same God that spoke through Elisha to this woman. And whatever you need, he's more than equipped to give it to you. Whatever tank in your life is running on empty, he's more than capable of filling it to overflow. Filling it so much so that you don't even really have to pour out because it's spilling out of you. He's more than capable of doing that in your life today. So I am, um, I'm gonna pray. And after I pray, I know this message is for, today is for the women. So I'm gonna give you a little rundown of what this, the rest of this is gonna look like, okay? We like to know, be prepared, what's next? I'm gonna pray. And then, I have these little jars. With just a little bit of oil in them. It's for everyone in the room, I have enough. But I'm gonna ask that after we pray, would you do a bold, brave thing and just come forward and get this as a reminder? A reminder that you know what, all we have is a little bit. But this leaves this much room 
for God to do a work in your life. And I'd rather have more works of God in my life than I would my own oil in my life. Would you take this as a reminder? And then I think we're gonna sing a song that's really fitting for you and for me in this message, in this season, in this area of our life. And then, and then, we have cupcakes for you, Mom. We have Joy's Cakery cupcakes out there, and I prayed this morning that all the calories would disappear. That's right. And they didn't, okay, they didn't. Um, I- I'm sure they didn't. But you're not gonna gain a pound from eating a cupcake today. Treat yourself, okay? So make sure you grab a cupcake on the way out. But let's just pray. Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you for this day that we get to honor, remember, reflect, on all of the women in our lives that you've placed in front of us, with us, alongside of us. Thank you for being the God that sees what we need and knows what we need, but still is respectful to us to ask us what it is we need. God, would you build us up in faith today would you remind us that you are, you are a God that sees how little we have. And you are a God that is willing to partner with us to overflow our lives. God, I thank you that you are the God that when we give you empty vessels, you give us in this oil. God, when, when, we, give you a, when we give you a clean slate, you are able to reconstruct our fate. God, when you offer up, sorry, when we offer up our desperation, God, you change our destination. God, I just thank you that when you give, when we give you our dead end, God, you pave our rescue route. Maybe you're in this room this morning and you know that you've been running on E. You would say that you haven't really fully put your trust in God to fill you up. But today would be that day you would say, God, I I wanna face it, I need a savior. I wanna face it, I need your touch in my life. I wanna face it, I have very little and I need you to fill me to overflow. If you would say today, I'd like to give my life to the Lord or rededicate my life to the Lord for for all that he has for you, if that would be you in the room, with all of the eyes closed and all of our heads bowed, would you just raise your hand and say, that's me, I need, I'm on empty. And I need to face it, I, I need a savior. Thank you. What a bold step to say, God, I need you more than anything. And I'm asking you into my heart. If that would be you online, would you just type decided in the chat? You've decided to put your faith in Jesus. Maybe you're in this room and you would say, you just need a little faith to pour out from what seems to be empty in your life. God, I just need a little bit of your oil to add to my oil. If that would be you, would you just raise your hand in this room? God, I face it. I'm running on empty. I need you to fill me up. Praise God. Jesus, you see everyone in this room and you know their hearts. And God, I pray right now that for those that would say today is the day 
that they wanna make you Lord of their life. God, right now in this moment, help them to confess that to you. They need you as a savior. They need you as Lord. God, would you come into their life? Would you fill them to overflow? God, would you take their little and make it your abundance? And God, for those in the room that would say, I'm running on empty, I love you, Jesus, I serve you, God, but my faith is running thin and I need an extra ounce. God, would you begin to fill them as they sing this song, as they proclaim these words, God, that you are the same God today that you were when Elisha was here. You are the same God today that you were when Moses was here. You are the same God today that you were when the blind beggar was here. You will do it for us. You will provide, you will protect, you will heal, you will renew. You will do the same. God, we praise you. And as we come and, and pick up our oil, God, would you just remind us? Would you remind us of the God that you are? Would you help us to reflect on the God that we serve, that you created the heavens, you created the earth with only your words. God created us a new thing. In Jesus' name, amen. You can come and grab your oil and take it back to your seat. You don't have to stay up here.